for Thursday, July 28th, 2022. Uh, board members, you have in front of you the minutes of the June 30th meeting. Uh, is there a motion for approval of those minutes? Are we voting on this on the machine? Okay. I'm not doing anything, am I? I'm trying to get out of this thing. All right, don't touch it. <laughs> okay. Jim Durrett moved. Uh, second was by Thomas Worthy. Oh, there you go, Thomas. Okay, we didn't want your vote anyway, Priya, so that's all right. Uh, yeah, I got a vote, don't I? Where? All right, how do I vote? Oh, I'm up here. How do I get up there? Right there. Go to the side. Oh, yeah, there we go. I'll be on there. Okay. All right, the minutes are adopted. Uh, first item on the agenda this morning is a briefing on the Summerhill BRT progress update. And for the sake of my sanity, I'm gonna say AJ, <laughs> yes. uh, the Director of Construction Management, uh, and you'll forgive me for not attempting that name. But. No, no problem at all. Thank you so much. Good morning, Chairman Floyd, committee members, Mr. Renew and Mr. Srinath. Today I'll be presenting the, a briefing of the Summerhill Bus Rapid Transit Program. Next slide, please. So just a quick agenda. We're going to be discussing a little bit about the route, um, where we are currently in the uh, overall schedule, and some of the key accomplishments and where, how we're going to be moving forward. Next slide, please. So an overview of the project. Um, this is part of the More Marta program. It's the first project of the More Marta program. This route resides holistically within the city of Atlanta, and it's a bus rapid transit line that's approximately five miles a round trip. And as part of this procurement, we will be procuring five articulated buses, uh, BRT buses. They're battery electric bus powered, or battery electric powered buses. And they are articulated, five brand new ones that will be part of this procurement. It's a concurrent procurement that we're gonna do as part of this program. Um, as part of uh, supporting those battery electric buses, we are also going to be installing some uh, overhead catenary infrastructure, some charging infrastructure at what's called the Southern Terminus. And so there will be two of those. Uh, we'll get more into that later. And we will be serving major institutions um, such as Georgia State University Convocation Center, the Georgia State University uh, Stadium. And there's a lot of development ongoing on Hank Aaron Boulevard, if anybody's been, or on Hank Aaron Drive, if anybody's been down there recently, there's a lot of new retail, there's a brand new grocery store, and uh, we're also going to be serving uh, the city uh, hall as well as other areas and have some connecting points to Five Point stations as well as uh, Georgia State Station, our rail stations. Next slide, please. So just to kind of zoom in on the, the route itself, we're going to be looking at it from three different pieces. We're going to start on the northern section first and work our way southwards. Um, the first section is actually going to be south of our Five Point Station in the south downtown area. Um, if we take a look at the stations at the bottom, we're going to kind of work our way counterclockwise. But the first station is Memorial Drive. Uh, that's right there at Memorial Drive. Um, you can see kind of the two stations that are there. As you start to traverse northward and uh, going again counterclockwise, we, our next stop is going to be in front of the Fl Sloppy Floyd Building, which is the, uh, also a transfer point for Georgia State Station, our rail station. Uh, if we traverse even further along, uh, we have an intersection there at Central Avenue and MLK Drive. Uh, this is a point of uh, departure for Fulton, the Fulton Government Center that's there. Um, as we traverse even further along, we have a transfer point for Five Point Station Rail which is about two blocks north of the actual stop and as we are the station itself. And as we continue along, we'll be going to Broad Street along Mitchell, and then we, our final stop is over at City Hall. Um, the perforated lines that are shown, those are areas where we're going to be doing shared lanes 
to allow for us to do some turning um, that was necessary in certain areas just because of the uh, the the way that we had the the street set up okay oh. A absolutely so next slide um, this is MLK between Pryor Street and Peachtree Street this is a one-way street as you can see on the right hand side and left we are able to retain parking on both sides and we do have a bus dedicated bus lane which is uh, indicated here in red next slide please this is our station in front of the Sloppy Floyd building. Um, the station, as you can see, I'm going to get into sort of the details of what, what it makes up a station. But as you can see here, the station does have um, on-ramps and off-ramps for ADA access. It is a 14-inch platform or 14-inch high platform to allow for level boarding. So, um, and you can see a TVM machine. But again, we'll, we'll talk about more details later. Next slide, please. And so this is a typical section on Mitchell Street between Pryor and Central. Um, again, it's a one-way street. We were able to retain parking on the right-hand side. We do have a dedicated bus lane in this segment as well. Next slide, please. This is a unique configuration in which we actually build out a curb into the street. Uh, this is on Mitchell Street and Broad. Um, again, we are able to retain a dedicated bus lane in this area, but we do have to build out that curb to be able to install our station. Next slide, please. So, oh, yeah, um, Mr. Durrett, or Chair Durrett. I was curious to know for that, uh, if you go back to slide number four, maybe, what, where you had the map up, mm -hmm. what is the sort of the mean distance between stations? I know this is a, an express BRT, so it's going to be longer than your standard bus stops on a standard route. So what is the distance between? It's about approximately half a mile. Okay, so quarter mile maximum walk to get to a stop. Correct. Terrific. Correct. Thank you. All right, so um, next segment we're going to be talking about is we're calling the Summer Hill. It actually starts south of I-20 and traverses all the way down to Ormond Street. Um, so the first station is Fulton Street. Again, we're going to go from north to south. Um, these are, this lane is, or sorry, this um, segment is wholly on Hank Aaron Avenue or Hank Aaron Drive. And the first stop is actually at the GSU Convocation Center, so Georgia State University Con Convocation Center. Um, as you traverse further south, we have a stop right at the stadium and Georgia Avenue. Georgia Avenue, for those that have been down in Summerhill recently, there's a lot of retail and development that are, that's happening there currently, and that is also where a Publix uh, grocery store is being installed currently, or being built currently. Um, if we go further south, we have yet another stop at Ormond Street. So again, this is 100% dedicated bus lanes. Next slide, please. So this is a view north on Hank Aaron. Uh, as you can see, we have dedicated bus lanes on both the north side and the south side. We also have parking. We've retained parking on the east side of this uh, of Hank Aaron. We also have dedicated bicycle lanes, both northwards and southwards. Next slide, please. This is a view of the station at Georgia Avenue. Again, it's a uh, Good rendering, we have plenty of space there, so that, that is essentially where we're planning to place it is on the far side stop. Next slide, please. So the last segment we're gonna talk about is the southernmost segment, which we you can see Ormond Street is just to provide a little bit of overlap and give you some bearings on where we are, but we are gonna be traversing now southwards into Peoplestown. We do have a station, again, at Haygood Avenue. Uh, this will be on both sides of the street. Essentially, one's near side stop, one's on the far side. Um, and there is a perforated line there. So in the perforated section, we have primarily dedicated lanes for the rest of the route. But that segment, we have one dedicated lane because of the, uh, the width of the street, along with the need to uh, retain some parking for some of the residents that are there uh, that do not have any driveways. So we needed to retain some parking spaces in that segment. So that's the reason for that. Um, let's go to the next slide, please. 
So this gives you an indication of what that segment looks like. Again, it's between Haygood and Atlanta Avenue. We are having one dedicated bus lane, just not on both sides. But you can see the parking is retained there as well. Next slide, please. And this is an indication of the two stations that are across the street from each other at Haygood Avenue. Next slide, please. So let's talk a little bit about our stations themselves. Um, so as mentioned, we have 14 inch level boarding. Uh, so that allows for ADA access, ingress and egress out of the, uh, the buses themselves. We are also going to do off board fare collection. So we are gonna have TVM machines at these stations. So you can go ahead and purchase your fare. You can enter into the bus, either the rear or the front doors. Uh, so that kind of allows for egress, eg ingress and egress a little bit faster. We are going to have real-time passenger information on the platforms itself. So again, this is a, to mimic the feel that you're gonna get on our rail stations. Um, we also are gonna have customized shelters and seating. We have benches, as you can see, we have lean rails, which are also there as well, and um, other amenities. We will also have windscreens, a canopy, a lot of lighting, uh, and we do have some security features as well, which is CCTV cameras, along with an assistance phone, push button phone that allows us to, uh, to be able to get our customers, uh, customer service or any kind of security um, support. In addition to that, we also are installing transit signal priority. This facilitates movement of our buses through traffic lights in a more uh, efficient manner. So that is a technology that is rolled into this procurement. Next slide, please. So again, one of our goals is to mimic our, the rail experience, right? So we're on, we're on buses, but we wanna mimic our rail experience. So we have stations, we have a lot of these same amenities that we have on a platform at a rail station being mimicked here for BRT. Um, so it, one of the goals, again, is to have frequent, reliable service. We have Monday through Friday, we're gonna have from 5 a.m. to 1 a.m. Um, service, <clears throat> hours of service, along with Saturday and Sunday, 8 a.m. to 1 and 8 a.m. to 11, respectively. We are increasing our headways or decreasing our headways about 50%. So we're going from a 30-minute headway down to a 10 to 15 minute headway, uh, which is a significant improvement over where we were today. Um, in, in addition, we are not gonna have significant dwell times. We're not gonna have downtown staging. We are going to be procuring those five new BRT vehicles as part of this procurement. We are 85% dedicated bus lanes, and we do anticipate an 11 to 12 minute ride from Atlanta Beltline to Ted Turner Drive. Next slide, please. So this is another rendering, <coughs> excuse me, of the station itself. As you can see, you can see the canopy. We are going to be reaching out to, um, to artists to try to uh, bolster some of the, the look and feel and the branding for a lot of our stations. Uh, you can also see the tactile strip for ADA uh, for our visually impaired customers um, or patrons. So we will have tactile strip right at the uh, end of the, end of the um, platform there. Next slide, please. So a quick timeline, uh, 2022, in the next few weeks, we are gonna have our 100% design complete. Um, we are targeting a September advertisement for a construction vendor, and we are concurrently working with the Department of Watershed Management to uh, start relocating utilities. So you will see boots on ground efforts there on the corridor, so that's gonna start this fall. Um, when we go to the spring, we are beginning to do notice to proceed. So we will be doing construction, implementation, notice to proceed in spring. Uh, in 2024, we should have procured the buses and we will continue to construct in this area. And early fall 2025 is when we anticipate revenue service will begin. Next slide, please. So some of the key accomplishments, we did have a right-of-way agreement uh, legislation, right-of-way legislation, passed the city of Atlanta, and we held an industry day on July 20th, 2022, which garnered a lot of great feedback and attention from local and national firms. Uh, we had actually taken uh, a bus tour of the entire route and were able to uh, kind of share some ideas and get some feedback. It was very successful from our uh, perspective, and uh, we 
anticipate doing this for future programs as well because it did garner some interest. So just, just wanted to share that. Um, the resolution to mar the board in August for approvals to make offers and for settlement of right-of-way parcels. So that is upcoming in the next uh, board meeting. We will be asking for right-of-way parcel uh, agreements or approvals to make offers for agreements. And we are doing um, upcoming efforts. We're going to be doing 100% design, completing our 100% design. We're going to be doing our final cost and schedule update, uh, grant amendment, and the electric bus procurement is underway. We are trying to pull that RFP together right now. Next slide, please. So with that, I thank you. Thank you, AJ. Uh, a couple of things. That the resolution on the right-of-way, uh, are we going to vote on that at the next board meeting? Is that the intent? Uh, real estate is not here right now, but I believe that is the intent. Sir, that, that is the intent. We'll, we'll bring that forward at the next board meeting. Okay, uh, so we don't need to consider that today. Then, no, sir. At all? Nope. Sorry. No, and there'll actually be a couple of asks because there's, there's a number of properties that will be acquired under this program. I think we're talking close to 70 properties. The ones that are under $25,000, they'll be bringing to you as an initial package um, at the next full board meeting. Okay, so but th th that'll come not from this committee. That'll just come as a general item right on the board meeting, another item. Okay. Correct. All right. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, well, a couple of things before I, I ask for Jim. One, Mr. Pond is the chair of this committee. I'm not. He is not here today. He's out of the city, so uh, and he regrets not being here. The other is, in full disclosure, I'm not related to Sloppy Floyd at all. Not the sloppy part or the Floyd part, just so that you knew that. I, I asked them to take the sloppy part off, and they might think it was my station then, but they wouldn't have been unable to do that so far here. But anyway, are there any questions? AJ, I'm sorry, Rod. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I, have, I just have a couple of questions. Thank you for the presentation. Um, ridership, current ridership that's on, the, on this route, do we have an idea of what that looks like so we can know what it's going to look like when this change happens? Do we have any, a baseline to start off with? So I, I can definitely get that information for right. you. I don't have that offhand. Okay. That would be helpful in, in kind of explaining to our public why we're going to, why we're moving in this direction and some other things that we, we just need to, 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 to be aware of. Um, my other question has to do with bathroom access. I think we talked about that before. I didn't know if there was any changes at all on this route anywhere where there's any way to access bathrooms? Not that I know of. It's not on the route at all? Okay. No. All right. Okay. All right. And uh, oh. Right. Well, the rail stations, those are transfer points. So yes. Okay. So once you get to the rail station, that will be the place where they can access it? That's correct. Okay. All right. And I think that's the one that's across from the floppy? Yes, there's a transfer at five points at um, Georgia State Station, and then we're within okay. a couple blocks of Garnett as well. All right, thank you. Uh, and then my ask, last question was to do with the, um, the street maintenance. I know we're getting ready to put all these pretty colors down, but what happens after a couple of seasons when it snows and it rains? Are, do we, are we responsible for maintaining that, or is that the city? So we, it's a city. We, we do have a city agreement on who's going to be maintaining what, so we have agreements in place, and okay. we do negotiate that right. up front. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dirt. Uh, yeah, uh, before I ask you my questions, uh, Rod, when we took this project on and got the funding to do it, you had to do the analysis of ridership and everything to justify it. So all of that is buttoned up and, and good. Um, I, I just want to say... I'm, I'm really excited about this. This is another huge step forward um, when you consider doing this as well as um, what we're going to be doing in the Campbellton Corridor. Um, it's a demonstration that MARTA is really working hard to expand and provide better services. And, uh, and so I just wanted to say that. And the last thing I'll say is um, I don't know if in this room um, we had a moment to think about um, the contribution that Heather Oladef has made. Um, I've known Heather for probably a couple of decades, and, um, and this was uh, one of the most important projects that she took on and managed. And so I just wanted to have an opportunity to, you know, to say thank you. Thank you for bringing that up, Jim. Oh, uh, Chair Scott. 
Yes, you mentioned a tour. Ken, will you relate to us or inform us who took the tour? Uh, it's quite a few people. We actually had two buses that we had taken on the tour, so it was a it was a myriad of, of vendors or builders, uh, building contractors, um, some local uh, consultants that were just curious about the route itself, and DBs. Yep, we did have a lot of DBs that had joined us as well. Um, I know a few offhand that um, the concrete lady, she was fantastic. Um, so we, we did have some really good conversations uh, on the bus tour and at the stops. We did stop at two different places along the tour and just wanted to just understand their perspective, so. Were there any elected officials? No. No elected officials? No. No one from the City of Atlanta Transportation Committee or anything? No. What's that? We did that about a year ago and I, I was on that there were several board members. I don't remember exactly how long, but they took the route, stopped, and looked at everything, and there were several board members that were there as well as elected officials. Right, that, but it has changed. We have a new, a newly elected city council. We do, in there, but South I do East. know that Andre was there yeah. that day, too. Yeah. So. Right. If I could he clarify. Was, he was the Transportation Committee Chair prior to being mayor, but in some of the various meetings that we've been in, I wanted to make sure and have an answer to that question. I remember the tour, I didn't mm -hmm. participate, but I do remember, but I also know we have, for instance, in that area, we have a newly elected council person. Yeah. And so that's why I wanted to know. Yeah. Yeah, so Chair Thank Floyd, you. if I may clarify, the, the tour was part of the industry day presentation and therefore it was really tied to the procurement and the potential vendors. Uh, and that's who the, the tour was kind of set up for so they could see what they'd be bidding on uh, in, in hopes and anticipation of, of working with Marta to make this, uh, this project come to fruition. Thank you. Curious about, because I just know it's such a difference in the council now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Frida. No, I just wanted to echo what Jim said. Thank you so much for those of us that have been watching this over the years. It's great to see it come to fruition and be able to be a part of something that's gonna really help this area. So thank you for everyone that's done the work on it. Yeah, thank you, and uh, uh, one quick question about changes to bus routes. Uh, I know this will impact a lot of those things. When, when do you all, or do you get involved in that, or is that, how do, when does that begin to happen? <clears throat> so I, I believe the, the existing bus route will, will remain in place. Okay. Um, and then you're, we're going to supplement with this new bus route. Now, I don't want to speak on behalf of planning. Uh, that is typically a planning effort. They, will, they have a whole team that basically uh, checks to see ridership and, and what the planned routes are going to be. But my understanding is that we are going to retain the bus route that is there currently. Okay. And then will there be any changes considered, I guess, in getting people to these stations somehow on buses or bus routes? Or, um, or probably... Yeah, <clears throat> I believe so. I, I'm just wondering if that's anything that you all look at. Since the construction won't be completed until 25. No, we'll, not yet. We'll, we'll do, like, as AJ said, we'll do an overlap at the beginning, and then we'll do a bus route refresh to, okay. to address all those issues coming up in 25. Okay. All right. All right. Are there any other questions of AJ? Thank you very much for this presentation. This is... BRT Project 1, so uh, it is very important to MARTA and to the community and to the city. So uh, anyway, and I think uh, one of the things you can begin to see by the list of stuff that we're considering in this Capital Programs Committee today, that this, this committee is going to be busy for the next several years in making sure this, and it's encouraging to see that begin to pick up a little bit as we get closer in this. But, I don't want to put a lot of pressure on you, but there is a lot of pressure on you <laughs> with delivery of Project One. So <laughs> anyway, all right, if there are no other questions for AJ, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We will go to item three, which is a resolution authorizing the name of the various stations along the Summerhill Capitol Avenue Bus Rapid Transit Corridor. Greg Gufrida. Jafrida. Jafrida, Capital it. Programs Public Engagement. Great. That's right. Yeah. Good luck. Mr. Floyd, Chair Scott, fellow members of the committee, thank you so much. <laughs> you saying good luck for good this luck. resolution? Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. 
The only thing you could be doing worse is looking at paint colors. That would be the only That's thing right. that That's make right. this more controversial. Well, we're looking at off-white for everything, so <laughs> hopefully that's not controversial. Uh, thank you so much. We're just going to be talking about this resolution to authorize the names on the stations, and we'll walk through some of the process we went through for this. Next slide. So we're approaching 100% design on this project. We need to finalize the station names so they can go into the final construction documents. The goal here is to com clearly communicate de destinations and directions for the customers who will be using the service. We followed kind of a combination of MARTA naming conventions as well as the precedent set by the Atlanta streetcar. We provided 10 days of public comment, that's 10 business days, uh, via email and phone calls and we distributed word on this with uh, email to stakeholders, uh, social media platforms, and printed flyers at various community facilities. Next slide. So I'll walk through the proposed names that uh, you are being asked to vote on now. We'll start at the top of the map at five points, and then we'll follow that counterclockwise the same direction as the service. So starting with five points, our rail connection there, to South Downtown, that's located at Mitchell Street and Forsyth, City Hall, Memorial at Trinity, Convocation Center, Summer Hill, Ormond Street, People's Town, Carver, then coming back northbound, People's Town, Ormond Street, Summer Hill, Convocation Center, Capitol Gateway, Georgia State Rail Connection, and Fulton Government Center. Next slide. So just to summarize some of the public comments, um, and I will show you, the map on the left does show the original names that we put out. Uh, we received about 14 emails and one phone call on public comment. We also monitored some of the social media response. A few of the things we heard, we had some people who felt we should just name it after the street intersection and just stick to the very strict naming convention that we use for our local bus stops. Um, that is one direction to go. I think you miss out on a lot of opportunities to call out the destinations that we have along this route. We really have some important institutions and places that people want to go. And um, as on the streetcar, there's an opportunity to identify those in a much more clear way for the customer who is maybe not as familiar with our local street network. Uh, we heard a lot of comments about Southern Terminus. Uh, frankly, Southern Terminus was kind of a working name, I think, just because it's the end of the line where we turn around. We heard a lot of the comments from residents to, in the neighborhoods to the south, South Atlanta, Carver Hills, Chosewood Park, uh, who felt that the station name there should reflect those communities who are going to be using it. And so we, um, I'll go through some of the changes we made. Um, we also heard from various folks in the neighborhoods who felt that we should be recognizing the names of the neighborhoods, including People's Town. Of course, the working name for this project has been Summer Hill BRT. We will have some future branding that will change that, and so we did want to recognize Summer Hill and People's Town in some way. Um, originally, we had northbound and southbound kind of differentiating the stations. Based on feedback and a little bit more technical uh, feedback here internally with MARTA, we're going to leave those directions off of the station names, but we will still have internal designations for the direction just for the purposes of public safety and maintenance. Uh, next slide. So looking at some of the revisions we made here, you can see we changed Mitchell at Forsyth to South Downtown. Uh, that stop is really kind of at the center of a lot of the redevelopment that is ongoing in the South Downtown area. It's kind of near the end of Hotel Row, uh, not too far from the Gulch where a lot of things are happening. Uh, Convocation Center, we had that shortened with northbound and southbound. Uh, we're just going to spell out Convocation Center. Uh, for those who haven't seen it, this is the new arena that Georgia State is building. Uh, it's pretty close to completion and I think that's going to be a major destination. We changed GSU Stadium to just Summer Hill. That's really the center at Georgia Avenue of a lot of activity and redevelopment happening in Summer Hill. Um, going down to, we left Ormond Street. Haygood Avenue was changed to People's Town. That stop is at the center of People's Town. Um, Southern Terminus was changed to Carver. Um, based on some discussion with residents in the community, Carver can refer to a lot of things. It can refer to Carver High School. It can refer to villages at Carver. 
Carver Hills neighborhood, uh, Carver Market down in South Atlanta. And so we felt that Carver really captures a lot of those different names and uh, really identifies the place. And finally, MLK at Central was changed to Fulton Government Center for its adjacency to the Fulton County Courthouse and Government Center. Uh, and next slide. And so with that, we'll be happy to take any questions and comments, and uh, we are seeking approval of this resolution. Thank you. Okay, uh, is there a motion for adoption of these names? Hear a motion, so is there any discussion? Okay, it is moved and seconded. So, all right, any discussion or questions regarding this issue while Greg is here? Yeah, um, Mr. Chair, I have a question. Be careful, um, Rod, be careful. Yes. <laughs> third, third rail, even though it's a bus. All right. <laughs> the, the community input in the, in the naming process, uh, I saw in it what said just 14 emails. How did you engage the community? I just was curious how was, how to get their ear on, on some of the things that they wanted in that space. Gotcha. So it was a pretty short process. Uh, Frank, we did 10 business days on the um, direction of legal counsel. It was a flyer that was distributed by email and printed copies left in community facilities. And so it went from, forgive me, I forget the exact dates, but it was a Tuesday through a Monday, and so it was 10 full business days plus two weekends to give some additional time. All right, thank you. Welcome. Any other questions for that? One question, or is it? No. One question is, what is the, once we approve this, what is the process to change it? That is a good question, and I think I'll have to defer to our legal counsel for that. Once we approve the names and we put them up, um, at that time it would require, you know, getting board action to take them down and make those changes. Uh, it's not exactly a simple process um, to change station names, and it's quite expensive. So I would hope that we're comfortable with these names to the point that once we bless them, that we wouldn't be taking these down anytime in the near future. Okay, and I guess the other question is that, because I can promise you, you had 14 emails. You know, once you put these names out there, you're going to get 114 in an hour. So uh, when does it cost money to change the names of these stations? I'm going to call in some help from Carrie, I think, on that. Thank you. So we're looking for this approval to go forward with bid documents. Obviously, the naming space-wise, we need to know what that is when we are putting this out for bid. If we decide to make a change once you know these bid documents are out there, um, we will have to pay for it. And so hopefully, the names will all be the same length. <laughs> Otherwise, we have to change the characters and the style you know, that need to go onto a station. So we are looking for this approval now so that it goes out in the true bid documents. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Are we ready to vote? Uh, or have we already voted? So, no. All right. We're ready to vote on this? So, and the motion carries. Thank you. To abstain, it, it, Heather, you and Russell can vote, you know, you can let us know how you feel about these names if you want to. You don't just, you don't have to abstain. <laughs> this doesn't count. <laughs> okay, thank you, Greg, we appreciate that. Next item's a resolution. I'm sorry. Well, I vote yes, I can't vote it. Okay, would be, okay. Rita Scott, Chair Scott voted yes. Resolution authorizing the award of a contract for procurement of design services for Clayton County Multipurpose Operations and Maintenance Facility, AE50123, Larry Prescott. Thank you, Mayor Floyd. Good morning, Mr. Shranath, board members, staff. Uh, I'm, thank you for that introduction. I'll just go to the next slide. So I was before this board member, uh, board, board, uh, committee uh, a, a year ago, uh, August of 21, to solicit the, the procurement of, of, this, of these design services. Uh, in February, we received uh, six qualified statements from architectural engineering firms. 
the source evaluation committee reviewed them and we shortlisted them down to two. Those two firms were uh, given oral presentations in this past June. And right now the current status is at 30% design. So we're getting that next step where we need to go into final design, so that's why we're here today. And other statuses, on the right side there you see the current site. There's a small parcel on the north and a large one on the south. Uh, we've completed the right-of-way acquisition for these sites, but I want to quantify that we've completed. Uh, we've basically, we've wired the money before the end of the fiscal year to, to those entities. So now we're in the phase of the, the larger parcel. We're in a condemnation uh, resolution there, as well as uh, both of them have tenants. So we have to resolve the tenant relocation for those. So it's an ongoing process, but we've made the first step of transferring money as far as the completed goes. Sir. Larry, before you go forward, help me understand how we can be at 30% design phase when we're just now considering a, a, awarding a contract for the design. This phase. is the final design. Okay, so someone else, did, did MARTA do the work yes, to it, get it, it to 30%? Yes, sir. Our, our on-call planning services consultant did, Thank did, you. did the, the planning and the preliminary design in-house. Thank you. And next slide. So here we are transitioning the purpose. Uh, this was part of the Clayton County More MARTA program as the, to provide a, an a operating maintenance facility down there along with security. Uh, the, the image on the right kind of shows the, the, the current con conceptual layout for that new, new facility on that site. Uh, the A&E firm will be providing the final design services for that maintenance facility to support 250 buses along with the, the fare, fuel, and wash to support that, as well as a wellness center and a police precinct for security and we're throwing in a, a firing range to help that southern access down there for security again. Next slide please. So going to the cost for this uh, after reviewing with the committee uh, that on the overall program here, uh, the any services are proposed to be at $23 million. It's a two-year base term with two one-year options. Uh, the total 30% design construction cost is $200 million. Now, originally when we did this nine months ago, it was 150 million, and so we were building upon that, and everybody knows the past nine months a lot has happened in the industry. We've also had the opportunity to add more scope to the project as this project is developed through the 30% design completion. So it went from the 150 to the 200 million dollars. Uh, the A&E services are a percentage of that based in, we threw in additional scope for bid support services and design services during construction. So. Uh, uh, regarding the uh the cost estimate to construct, um, you were touching on it, but how comfortable are you? It is a contingency built into this since yes, sir. materials costs are escalating by the minute? Yes, sir. We have both a, a I'll call it a, an industry contingency as well as an overall contingency and an escalation contingency that's higher than normal. So we've, we've gone from a normal 3% to an 8% on the, on the escalation. Uh, the industry, we've gone to a 12% contingency, and the overall program at 30% because of where we're at in this, the design phase. All right, uh, schedule-wise, we're still on schedule. The, the real estate has been, is, is that gotten to the point where we can move forward with the final design now. Uh, once we get this approved, the construction will go on in the 24 and be complete by December 26 to meet the Amendment 15th uh, deadline. Next slide. The SEC has, has recommended that the, the shortlisted firm that we picked is the STV Incorporated team. Uh, their subconsultants are below there. The bolded ones, Acura, Nickel Works, Consulting, and CIRM are the DBE firms. The Office of Diversity and Inclusion has 15% DBE uh, goal for this, and STV is committed to a 17% in their proposals. Next slide. With that, I'd like to request for approval of this resolution for the procurement of design service for the Clayton County OMF facility, REIA 50123, for with STV Incorporated. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Larry. Is there a motion for approval of this resolution? It's moved by Thomas Worthy and a second by, I don't see that anywhere. Oh, there he is there. Second by Freda Hardage. Okay. Any discussion? Questions? Yeah, Mr. I'm Mr. Right. Chair, I have a question. I'm just chatty Cathy today, I guess. <coughs> um, We're making note of that, too. So, so uh, 
Larry, uh, do you feel as confident as you can that we will be under construction with this in 2024? Yes, sir. Because that'll be 10 years after Clayton County voted to join MARTA. Yes, sir. So we will be able to point to actual project under construction at that point. Yes, sir. With the, the, the linchpin has been the real estate. I understand now, that. Now that we've gotten past that key point, uh, I believe we will be totally on schedule. Uh, one of the benefits of we selected STV because of their experience, uh, our negotiations, they came in and asked a lot of questions and made recommendations. So the part of that increase in the overall construction cost was interaction with them as far as negotiations. So they're coming in well versed in understanding what the program is. I guess my recommendation, uh, Mr. Chair and everybody here, is that we should do everything we can to build a very clear narrative about how we got here and where it is going, because those in Clayton County that voted for this are have been expecting something. And we're delivering, but you have to make sure that you communicate very clearly how we got to this point, what we had to overcome, yes, and, um, and have them understand it as well as they can. So that's it. And to Director Durrett's point, um, a lot of progress is being made in, in Clayton County being a good steward of the sales tax uh, that was passed almost a, a decade ago. Um, new bus services were deployed uh, roughly a year ago, about the time I started working here, and the Clayton County Justice Center, there's an interim facility that's been stood up there along with um, the ticket vending machines, which are the first in Clayton County. This facility here that's uh, before the board today serves, will serve not only Clayton County, but South Metro. It is a significant investment in Clayton County beyond um, the, the county's uh, services. So it would support all of South Metro and all the jobs that would be located and vendors that would be coming um, to Clayton County. The Clayton South Lake BRT is MARTA's first um, capital investment grant uh, application since the 1990s and in the first one was for the BRT and Clayton South Lake um, we are moving forward with the Clayton State uh, transit corridor as well and uh, moving that forward in the in the planning process um, so there's there's quite quite a bit going on in, in Clayton County to your point director Durrett and um, it is important that we communicate all that we're doing and, um, and tout our, our progress and success as we continue to engage with our partners. Sounds like you're reading from the marketing material that you've been working on, <laughs> so good. All right, any other questions? Or, I mean, I'll second what you said, Jim, and I think it's important to note also the investment required to operate a transit system in Clayton County. I mean, it, it it's more than just bringing a bus out of a garage and starting it down the street. There's a tremendous, I mean, this is $200 million investment to operate a transit system in Clayton County, basically. And then this is just the tip of the iceberg. So anyway, well, I think we're all excited about where we're going with this and for Clayton County and their transit system. So if there are no other questions, uh, are we prepared to vote on this? All right, we have five votes, so the motion has passed. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. All right, next item <clears throat> on the agenda is a resolution authorizing the amendment of the contract with Cardinal Infrastructure, LLC, for professional services for federal advisory services. Letter of agreement, LOA L49435. Manjeet. Thank you, Mayor my Floyd. Voice. I'm not sure what's going on. Thank you, Mayor Floyd, and good morning, directors. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so Cardinal Infrastructure Consultants, they provide support to MARTA in advancing our capital program, particularly with the federal discretionary funding that is available and has been substantially increased with the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Next slide, please. Over the last 11 months since Cardinal has been retained by MARTA, it has helped to expedite the federal grant process. 
um, through reviews of federal rules and regulations as those are constantly changing and with a lot of changes through the IIJA that was approved by the federal government. It's advised uh, MARTA on how to satisfy planning, environmental, and other grant requirements. Um, again, this is something new as MARTA hasn't done the federal discretionary pursuits in, in a long time since the 1990s. So standing up the resources to support us is, um, is really helpful from what the work uh, Cardinal has been doing with us. Uh, Cardinal has outstanding relationships with federal agency staff as well as elected officials in the federal government to maintain uh, communication and as well as to um, position MARTA um, successfully for federal discretionary pursuits in particular as well as uh, improving regulations to make delivering projects more streamlined. Um, Mar uh, Car Cardinal has also supported uh, preparing grant applications recently including the uh, Clayton Southlake BRT, uh, Camelton Community Investment Corridor, Five Points, station transformation raise grant in the Georgia 400 freeway BRT mega grant application. And also uh, Cardinal uh, supports uh, MARTA staff as well as coordinating with Holland Knight on congressional advocacy um, on uh, work that MARTA does before the federal government. Next slide, please. Um, in the financial consideration, the existing contract um, was $198,000 um, because this will now exceed the $200,000 limit. Um, that's why it is before the board and that will bring the uh, total contract amount to $396,000. You'll see Cardinal um, Infrastructure has managed to uh, keep inflation in check and there is no change to the contract value from the current um, contract that's in effect for another few weeks. Next slide, please. So for future work, uh, Cardinal Infrastructure will continue to support MARTA on federal agency engagement and provide counsel to MARTA on its discretionary pursuits, particularly the CIG program, as well as all of the myriad new um, discretionary programs through the IIGA and also serve as a, a good liaison between FTA career officials as well as political appointees at FTA and uh, MARTA leadership. Next slide, please. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Cardinal coordinates very closely with Holland and Knight as uh, our congressional lobbyists. Next slide, please. So with that, staff recommends approval of the resolution authorizing the amendment of the contract with Cardinal Infrastructure, LLC, for professional services for Federal Advisory Services Letter of Agreement, LOA, L49435. Thank you. Thank you, Manjeet. Is there a motion for adoption of this resolution? There is. Is there a second? There is. Oh, all right. Discussion or questions from NG? Okay. Vital part of our business operation. So we're prepared to vote. All in favor of this motion, please vote or against it, either one. All right, so the motion is carried. Thank you, Manjeet. Next item on the agenda is a resolution authorizing award of a single source contract for smart restroom service, material, and hardware. Request for price proposal RFPP P50204, Jamil Howard Facilities Program. I didn't say that right, did I? Hamil. Hamil, yes. sorry, I apologize. Absolutely. Facilities uh, Program Manager. Absolutely. Good day, Co-Chair Floyd, Mr. Cernoff, Mr. Renew, and committee members. Thank you for your time today. As stated, I'm here to present the uh, sole source uh, resolution for the service material for the uh, smart restroom materials equipment. What is the smart restroom uh, program? So the smart restroom program is to convert uh, renovate, provide an access control, uh, video monitored, ADA compliant, uh, vandal resistant, hands-free, automated with integrated technology uh, restroom for the um, for motor rail stations. This will be applicable to all uh, restrooms that are single restrooms at the motor rail stations. Um, initiated in March or in 2015. Uh, MARTA initiated a pilot where we converted one restroom at both Lindbergh and Decatur Station to SMART. 
Uh, in 2021, we expanded that program or expanded the smart restroom program to four stations, those, those stations being East Point, Dome Station, Doorville, as well as HE Homes. As we move forward with the expansion, uh, the Office of Facilities has proposed a single procurement of the required equipment uh, to be purchased from PFS, Public Facility Services, for the remaining 66 restrooms at the 32 uh, Martyr Rail stations. Are there any questions? Thank you. Uh, is there a motion for adoption of this resolution? There is. Is there a second? Rita, and there is a second. Okay, any questions or comments regarding this work? None? How do you, how do you get into these things? I mean, <laughs> They're access controlled, so there is a um, there are agents that are going to be stationed here at the at MARTA headquarters. There's a button that you press, the Cinephone actually, where you press the button on outside the control panel. Uh, once that patron presses that button, someone from the access control center will allow them entry into the restroom. Okay, so there's no cost involved in it to the individual trying to get in. No, there is no cost. Absolutely not. <laughs> it is totally free. Well, I was in Europe, and they have a lot of restrooms over there, but it's 50 cents every time you go in. Yeah, thing, so. but this, this is totally free. And they're nice restrooms, but they charge you 50 cents to get in. Bill, are you suggesting another revenue stream for Mars? Okay. That's what I'm looking at here. <laughs> because well, this is one way to get the public really outraged. Well, at, at my age, that's about $20 a day worth of getting in and out of restrooms. Possibly. So, yeah, but. Possibly. <laughs> anyway, any, are there any uh, reasonable questions? About, I got one question. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, Oh. Chair Floyd. Rita, sorry. That's okay. Um, we just don't want them to charge women more. So. <laughs> uh, Very fair. Is there a visual when the person access will, it, wherever the control is, would they have a visual of the person? Absol absolutely. So um, if you can go back to the first slide, please. Okay. So just wanted to give you a visual of what it looks like on the outside. So there's a camera directly above the restroom. Um, that is the, it's a CCTV camera where the smart restroom agent has access to view uh, the, re the person outside of that restroom. So if you see that uh, the black, the camera above, there's gonna be a CCTV camera placed at each of the patron restrooms at the rail stations. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yeah, I had, I had a question. So uh, the the blue lights that we see uh, the in in the picture there, are, what are they for, and what do they serve? Okay, so those are the um, automated hands-free uh, components of the restroom. So our, our motion sensors. Uh, so of course you do not have to flush the toilet manually. It's an automated function, so that's those what the that's what those blue lights um, indicate. So it's just indication that the uh, it's an automated function um, and that is working with the lights are on when the lights are on. Okay, mm -hmm. great. I, I, I've used those, so I just want to make sure the public understood they, what they were for. Absolutely. I, I'm we're glad to see this advance because Absolutely. once again our stations have been in need of this, and so it's, it's good to see it move forward. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? If not, uh, we are ready to vote. And the motion carries. Thank Good you. luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Last item on the agenda today uh, is a briefing on the five points transformation update. Kelly Davis, Director of Facilities, Capital Delivery. Uh, good morning, Co-Chair Flood, uh, Mr. Renu, Mr. Srinath, and co fellow committee members. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the Five Points Transformation and provide an update to you. Next slide, please. The purpose of the program is to remove the canopy over the center of Five Point Station while opening up the facility to create a more welcoming public plaza. While doing that, we will reimagine the space as a bustling transit hub that improves the customer experience and contributes to the greater aesthetic of downtown. While doing that, we will also lay the groundwork for potential development focused in trans, uh, transit around the immediate area. 
uh, current funding. Uh, the bulk of the program is currently funded by the More Model Program. Uh, we are looking to receive um, approximately $11 million from the state of Georgia. And we did apply for a RAISE grant. A RAISE grant is a Rebuilding American Infrastructure with Sustainability and Equity, equity Grant, excuse me. Uh, that brings our total construction cost to $182 million that we applied for for the construction. Uh, the two pictures that you're looking at here are an overhead of the current canopy at the station and also a ground view looking at from Alabama and Broad Street. Next slide, please. So the project objective is to transform MARTA's busiest station to become more customer friendly, easier to navigate, and transfer between different modes of transit. What you see here are concepts only. Uh, the final design will be contingent upon further um, stakeholder engagement. Again, you have an overhead view um, of what, on the right of what the station could look like overhead. Um, and you have another view looking from Broad Street in Alabama again. Next slide, please. The scope of this project is to remove the concrete canopy without impacting rail or customer operations and bus operations um, to create a new structure to support and facilitate the possible reintroduction uh, of Broad Street as well as prepare for a future transit oriented development. Uh, currently, we are working on our project development and which does include the design and pre-construction services for the canopy deconstruction. Um, back in September 2021, um, we did come before you all and you approved the A&E design services to skid wool Owings and Merrill. Uh, in November, we came before you again and you did approve the CMAR contracting service to Skanska Buildings USA. Uh, we are looking for the pre-construction services for uh, the overall project, not just the deconstruction, to begin in 2023. We're looking for construction to begin in 2024, and we're looking to have the transportation complete in 2028. Now, our total project budget is $202 million, and those are in 2022 dollars. Next slide, please. So currently, we're finalizing the preferred concepts for the Five Point Station. We are working with the city of Atlanta to come up with um, what we all would like to see. Uh, we are focused on customer modal transfers, efficient operations, and community spaces. Um, we did re we submitted to the city 10 concepts. They came back to us and asked for a few more. We just received those on last Friday. So right now, we're doing an internal and external review with them. Uh, Skanska, who again is our CMAR contractor, they have begun the pre-construction services for the deconstruction of the canopy. Uh, they are at 30% design. We did receive those on the 15th. They were a little bit early. We were looking to get those at the end of the month, and right now we're, they're up on an internal review. Um, as a part of this project, we are having to re relocate uh, the MARTA precinct that's located at the station. We have located a, um, a potential space, and we are at least negotiations. Uh, while we're doing that, we are having architectural and infrastructure needs to make sure that the precinct can run um, as normal. It's, uh, it's a block from the current station. It's currently located well, it's located uh, at 50 Upper Alabama Street, so it's in sight distance of the, lo uh, of the station. Next slide, please. During the feasibility study of this effort, uh, we did have a contractor identify a potential way to deconstruct the canopy. And if you look here, uh, these are the 16 steps that it may take. Part of the um, deconstruction, excuse me, part of the pre-construction services that SCASCA and SOM are doing are actually seeing if this is um, being able to do or not. So if you look at it, it's, um, again, 16 steps. So the first step will be removal of the solar structure, and then we go down to the different levels, removing the precast and pretension uh, beams, planks, and um, going all the way down. So that's just to give you a little taste of what could be done. Next slide, please. So our internal and external communications have begun. We have met with various uh, external stakeholders, including CAP, Central Line of Progress, and the Atlanta Downtown and Neighborhood Associations. In addition, we have also met with several of the major business um, entities that are around there, including um, also with the City of Atlanta. Uh, City of Atlanta Planning and Department of Transportation have been heavily involved in our um, work thus far. Um, when we get a little bit closer, when we just cho do choose whatever the concept will be, we will have public participation, limited public participation on some of the design concepts. We do want our riders and our community to be able to choose what goes into their station. 
Hummingbird Firm, who is a DBE, has been engaged as the community relations firm by SOM, and they have submitted a very robust public engagement plan and is currently under internal review. Some of our risks uh, do include uh, the deconstruction of the canopy while allowing the station to be open and operational without any disruptions to our MARTA patrons. And also uh, the last risk that we're coming to the end of that one is finalizing what the uh, preferred concept will be. So, and um, that's, that's all I have for today. Next slide, please. Any questions, Kelly, about this? Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Have a good day. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Rod, Russell. you're first. Go ahead. No, I'm fine. I, I was just uh, a question on the timeline um, is obviously World Cups June 2026, and this looks like it'll be in the middle of construction during that time. Is there, it's four years. Um, I, I understand how long things take, but is there a way to accelerate that or to have? the major part of this done before World Cup? Um, unfortunately not, sir. Uh, we do have contingencies in place. What we will do is wrap the station to match the current, the market and whatever the World Cup will be. Now the station will remain open. Um, we will, there will be no access to the station from Broad Street to Alabama, but it will be open from both for Sife Street and also from um, um, Peachtree. But it's also important to note that these, the first part of the five, push, uh, five points upgrade, the platform work will be completed before the um, World Cup comes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jim Dirt. Well, uh, Russell took one of my points I wanted to make. Um, is there any financial participation or other meaningful support from ADID or Central Line of Progress? Um, no, their, their monies that come to us from them are part of the more MARTA um, funds that we do receive. Okay. Okay, one, one, one opportunity that remains to be discussed is programming the plaza area in whatever yes. form it ends up being designed. And that's a key element to making for successful urban public spaces and that's an area that I think would be helpful if MARTA engages with the city and Central Atlanta Progress and the other stakeholders about how to uh, successfully program the, uh, the plaza area. I don't yes. understand what that means, man. Programming, what is that? Uh, meaning having regular events, different types of events. Okay. And uh, I think Woodruff Park, there's, there's an example of that done by Central Atlanta Progress. So how you make it lively and, and organized and, and Place making. comfortable. Okay, I understand that. Uh, okay, quick question. When you take this canopy off, it's open then, right? There will be the a platform is working. Open? No, sir. There will be a working platform. Um, okay. The the idea is once the canopy comes off, we move straight into whatever the putback will be. So it will not be an open space. There should not be any safety issues, if that's what you're um, referring to. No, but there will be a working platform um, that the um, CMAR contractor will be working off of. So there will be a, a temporary roof, per se, on top of the, the hole that will be left there when we take off the canopy. Okay, I didn't really thought, I was thinking about rain. But oh no, no, sir. Okay. The canopy will will um, the temporary structure will not allow any water intrusion into the station. Okay. Any other questions, Jim? Yeah, you, you referenced um, potential future TOD. Yes, sir. Do at this point in the conceptual design development for this, because I see it's not final. Do we have a sense of how much real estate might be available? Um, for TOD? So we were working with our TOD department and they did provide an approximate square footage that we need to leave open for them. I do apologize, I don't have that figure in front of me, but I can provide it to you. But yeah, we are working with them to make sure that we provide space for them. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Russell, do you have another question? I apologize. That's, that's all right. You're holding up the meeting, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, any other questions to come before Kelly this morning? If not, thank you very much for that briefing. And are there any other matters? Oh, thank oh, you. Uh, the fair, I noticed the fair gates in the lobby down there. Is there anything coming up on that this morning? Or are we just supposed to look at that or what? Um, so I'll ask Chief 
Alan to come up, uh, but it's part of the alternative fair collection 2.0 uh, yes. process. Good morning. Um, there's nothing coming up today. Um, however, we do encourage you to go down to the uh, to the headquarters lobby and just take a look at them. That's just one vendor um, we plan to bring to the board in the fall the technical specs for the um, automated fare collection system. We're in the point now where we're taking um, conferences, um, we're talking to all, all types of vendors, and some of them have asked, can we show you our product? And that's just an example of a, a vendor that's sh um, showing their product off. We are, we've not made any decisions. That's not a vendor that you know, is a leading vendor in any way. In the next couple of weeks, you'll see other vendors that may bring in some, some uh, infrastructure to show and just display um, to let us know what's out there and what's possible. Just an easy way to display what's, what's in, the, in the market now. Okay, thank you thank very you. much. Uh, if there are no other items to come before this committee, we are adjourned.
operations and safety committee meeting to order. Um, before we get started, I was going to take a point of personal privilege and uh, board member uh, Katie Powers and her wife um, welcomed their son on Monday, um, Jackson. So mom and baby are healthy and so please uh, reach out to her and give your congratulations uh, if you are able. Um, we have a long agenda, so Mr. Dirt, you're limited to one question, and Mr. Floyd, you're limited to one joke, um, and we'll, we'll move on from there. Uh, but we'll get right into it. Agenda item number one is approval of the June 30th, 2022 Ops and Safety Committee meeting minutes. Can I get a motion for approval of those minutes? It is moved and seconded. Any questions, please vote. And that motion carries. Agenda item number two is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract for procurement of rail car movers, IFB B48987A. Mr. Miller, welcome. Good morning, Chairman Worthy, Mr. Srinath, Mr. Wright, and members of the Operations and Safety Committee. My name is Doug Miller and I'm the Director of Rail Car Maintenance. May I direct your attention to agenda item number two. The requested resolution authorizes the general manager, CEO, or delegate to enter in into a contract with Eastern Truck Lift Company for the procurement of rail car movers, IFB B48987A. Next slide, please. I will speak to these areas, explain why this funding is needed, and present the resolution for approval. Next slide, please. This is for the purchase of three Rail King RK330-G6 rail car movers. This is a two-year contract in the total amount of $1,621,411. This authorization is being funded with local capital funds and federal funds included in the approved FY 2023 budget. Funds for subsequent years' budgets will be included in the annual budgets. Next slide, please. The Rail King car movers will replace existing heavy rail car movers that have exceeded their useful life. Existing units consistently require extensive costs for maintenance, including outside maintenance services. This effort will provide critical support to both the rail car capital improvement projects, fleet life extension, L care, and ultimately the delivery of the CQ 400 new rail cars. This will support daily operational car moves between rail yard and shops for maintenance activities in support of revenue service. Purchase of these units will eliminate the requirement of relocate, relocation of existing yard movers between yards over revenue service tracks, reducing cost and impact to critical operator resources and, and track resources. This will reduce the need for using serviceable rail cars to tow defective rail cars in yards, freeing them for use in revenue service. Next slide, please. On April 11th, 2022, notice to bidders were sent to five vendors for this procurement. Notice of invitation for bids were advertised in the Atlanta Journal Constitution, the Georgia Procurement Registry, the Georgia Local Government Access Marketplace, and on MARTA's website, the usual places. 19 firms retrieved the online solicitation and or purchased the CD. At the bid opening date and time of May 10th, 2022 at 2 p.m., two bids were received. Thompson Truck Lift Company submitted the lowest bid in the amount of $1,424,838. However, this bid was determined non-responsible. The bid failed to meet the technical specification in the following areas. It was equipped with a three-speed three transmission instead of four-speed as required. It, <clears throat> excuse me, it was not equipped with air conditioning. It was equipped with a single air compressor instead of a dual air compressors, 
and this is key because it provides redundancy for the brake system, and it was not equipped with independent control stations. Eastern Truck Lift Company submitted the second lowest bid in the amount of $1,621,411 and was determined to be responsive and responsible bidder. The price was determined to be fair and reasonable based on an analysis by internal audit. The DBE goal is 4%. The vendor was unable to meet the goal, goal as the units are an established production unit. However, they have worked with us to maximize the amount through shipping and other considerations. The Office of Diversity and Inclusion is satisfied and considers this a good faith effort. I'm not sure what the, the they hadn't determined the final number yet. Uh, they were waiting on some documentation. Uh, next slide, please. I am requesting that the committee recommend to the full MARTA board this resolution authorizing award of a contract for the purchase of rail car movers, IFB B48987A, eight eight A, with Eastern Truck Lift Company in the amount not to exceed $1,621,441. Chairman Worthy, I will now turn it back over to you for consideration. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Miller. Can I get a motion on this agenda item number two, please? It has been moved and seconded. Any questions? Chair Scott? Yes, you stated DBE goals were met by examples of shipping. Can you explain that to me? Yeah, these are manufactured in Ohio, and there's going to need to be shipping to ship those units here. So they have agreed to use our local uh, DBE qualified shippers to use that. And then there's several other things that uh, we're looking at doing. There needs to be some graphics put on the units, and they're looking to do that for a local DBE firm and then also there's a coupling unit that has to be manufactured that will allow these uh, these units to couple to our MARTA rail cars and they're looking at using a, a local DBE uh, machine shop to to have those made too so, so they will ship the equipment here but the type of optics that you're talking about the work will be done locally here in Atlanta. the shipping the planning is for the shipping and those other things I talked about to, to be sourced locally yes locally thank yeah. you mm -hmm. mayor Floyd oh I don't have a joke but mr. Dirt's giving me ten questions to ask. <laughs> on his behalf. Uh, why is this a two-year contract it just will take a while to deliver them Okay. They're not so going to all come at is once. Is it all at three at one time? Or? No, no. They're going to be one, and then a few months later, the next one. It's going to spread out to more than one year, so we okay. made it a And a what two. happens to the old ones? Are we replacing three units? Well, actually, uh, what we have now are locomotives, which are a bigger, more expensive unit. And we, we're, and we only really, all our locomotives are pretty old and unreliable, so... We have one that's really good, but we're shipping that from yard to yard to yard every time we need to do that. And then when they need to do track work or wayside work, they need to move that there. To so we're constantly moving those, and those are really expensive. They're a bigger unit and much more expensive. So for, for this, we bought these smaller units that can be used in e and have one stationed in each yard. So when there's dead cars or, 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 or we're shipping cars or or whatever and you know we're going to do hundreds of shippings for example with a, a new car program we're coming to the end of the fleet life extension where we shipped and received you know 120 cars in in that program too so there's a lot of use a lot of use for these units and we just figured this was a more economical way to do it rather than having to use the big locomotives all the time and they'll be available to do the heavy work they were really designed for thank you Mr. Miller, um, you explained the coupling unit that allows us to attach to our cars. Will we have to build new coupling units when we get the new cars? Yes, sir. But we can still use these machines just with a different coupling unit? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Any other questions? Mr. Durrett, your only question of the meeting. And if anybody should know the answer to this, it's me, but I'm sorry I don't. Doug, you say one per rail yard, and I can come up with two rail yards that we have. Where's the third? 
Armour, Avondale, and South Carolina. Avondale, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right, we will call the question. Please vote. All right, and that motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Uh, res uh, agenda item number three is resolution authorizing the award of a contract for the procurement of bus midlife overhaul labor, IFB B44856A. Mr. Chafin. Good morning, Chairman Worthy, Mr. Shrinath, Mr. Wright, and members of the Operations and Safety Committee. Bring your attention to agenda item number three, the resolution authorizing the award of a contract for the procurement of bus midlife overhaul labor. IFB B44856A. Next slide, please. Each MARTA Transit bus receives a midlife overhaul after either reaching 250,000 or the six year point. Major components and related components are replaced, and MARTA's ability to perform this in house is reduced to the higher than normal vacancy rate at our Browns Mill facility. Current in house completion is approximately four per month. Next slide, please. What is a midlife overhaul? As stated, it's the major components, which are engine and transmission, subcomponents, which are generator, air compressors, and uh, hoses, tubes, wiring harnesses, and so forth. And we also do a check over the radiator and air cooler, the charge air cooler um, on the bus. And then we do any follow-up uh, tasks before releasing the bus back to service. Next slide, please. As stated earlier, the internal labor that we have can only do 48. Uh, buses annually and it would take four years to finish the current series of buses we're working on now with this contract that can be increased by twofold going to 96 buses and all parts and materials will be supplied by MARTA through our, our um, previous contracts there were 33 vendors that were invited to bid and two bids were received uh, the reason for the low amount of received bids is due to the technical nature and the warranty implica implications of the, um, the work being performed and the DBE goal was set at a robust 19%. The winning respondent was able to go to 5.6%, and that's utilizing a DBE uh, vendor to do the radiator and charge air cooler uh, task. Next slide, please. This is a three-year contract with no options, and it is available up to 80% grant funding. Um, the Office of Bus Maintenance respectfully requests authorization for the resolution to enter a contract with W.W. W. Williams in the amount of $3,398,512.80. Next slide, please. And now turn it back over to Chairman Worthy for your consideration. All right. Um, thank you, Mr. Chafin. Can I get a motion and a second? It is duly moved and seconded. Are there any questions from the committee? Any questions? Hearing none, please vote. That resolution passes. Uh, we will stay with Mr. Chafin for agenda item number four, resolution authorizing the award of a contract for procurement of preventative maintenance and repair services for bus fire suppression and CNG tank inspection, IFB B50078. Thank you, Chairman Worthy. So agenda item number four, as stated, is for uh, a resolution to enter into a contract with CentOS for the procurement of preventive maintenance and repair of bus fire suppression systems, CNG gas detection, and CNG tank inspections, IFB B50078. Next slide, please. Each MARTA transit unit is equipped with an automatic fire suppression system. The CNG buses all have a CNG detection system. And then this contract will include the new electric vehicle uh, bus fire suppression systems that, that we currently have and, and for future use. The CNG tank inspections were added to the solicitation, which was normally a separate solicitation in the past. Next slide, please. The current contract expires in 2022, August of 2022, and as previously stated, the new contract will include the six month inspections of the EMV bus, the EV bus uh, fire suppression, the CNG detection, and all the fire suppression systems, along with a 36 month inspection of the CNG tanks on top of the buses. Next slide, please. There were some challenges with this procurement that uh, made it last until the, uh, the deadline of the, the old contract expiring. 
Uh, we had to revise the bid deadline due to some scope of work changes. The addition of the EV technology um, showed a little bit of challenges for people to be qualified to work on this system. Um, the addition of the CNG tanks, it's a totally different certification and we'll be looking in the future how advantageous it is for us to combine them together. Um, the, the bid was sent to four vendors, five firms retrieved the CD and we received one response from our incumbent um, and that is due to all the certifications required for this particular um, contract. Audit has actually, uh, as of yesterday, determined this is a fair and reasonable pricing. And there was a 0% DBE goal, like I stated, towards the technical aspects. Next slide, please. This is a three-year base with two one-year options. It will be uh, funded with operating funds and the 2023 approved budget and subsequent year budgets. And the Office of Bus Maintenance respectfully requests authorization for the resolution to enter in a contract with CentOS Fire Protect Protection Services in the amount of $2,436,470.72. Next slide, please. And I'll turn it back to you, Chairman Worthy, for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Chafin. Can I get a motion and a second? It is duly moved and seconded. Uh, any questions from the committee? Cost money to become sustainable, right? Yes, sir. Any questions? All right, we will call the question. Please vote. And that motion carries. Uh, agenda item number five, we're sticking with the topic of uh, compressed natural gas. Uh, resolution authorizing the award of a contract for the procurement of MARTA compressed national natural gas supply IFB B50103. Mr. Morrow, welcome. Uh, good morning, Chairman Worthy, Mr. Shrinock, Mr. Wright, and members of the Operations Safety Committee. I'm Anthony Morrow, General Superintendent of Non Revenue, but I am standing in and helping out with my expert knowledge about compressed natural gas today. Next slide, please. Natural gas, CNG, is a readily available fuel here in the United States. This is something that we do not import from anybody. We get it from the United States with 473 billion cubic feet in reserves. Um, it has a lower COT emissions than gasoline or diesel. And if, in case we do have a spill or any kind of incident, we, there's, no case, there's no chance of it spilling into the waterways or anything like that. Next slide, please. To put it to perspective, our CO2 emissions compared to a diesel bus, we put 66,500 pounds less CO2 per bus than a diesel bus by using natural gas. Next slide, please. 75% of our fleet is compressed natural gas. Um, we use about 875,000 decatherms for our uh, transit fleet. And with this is our G11 accounts, and we use about 100,000 uh, 100, decatherms for that. That is mainly for the winter heating for our buildings, including this building that we're standing in. So this is included with this um, resolution. Next slide, please. We received a bid from uh, Mansfield for a 22 million uh, dollars It is a contract for three years. And Marta Audit Department found this price is fair and reasonable. Next slide, please. Uh, the Office of Bus Maintenance will especially request authorization for the resolution to issue a contract with Mansfield Power, Gas, and Light for $22,086,293. Uh, Chairman Worthy, and I'll turn it back over to you for consideration. Thank you, Mr. Morrow. Can I get a motion and a second? It is moved. And it is duly moved and seconded. Any questions on this agenda item? Mr. Mayor Floyd. Uh, one quick question. He's $22 million worth of natural gas, compressed natural gas. What would that number be if we were using diesel? Twice. 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 $40 million. Thank you. Mr. Dirt. Do you have any idea why only one firm out of those that indicated an interest even submitted a bid? It's the, it's the current um, economic and the market. Uh, the market is very volatile. Um, a lot of people, they don't have either the capital or they don't want to go into the risk of bidding on this because we just don't know what the market is going to be. 
Mr. Mullis. Thank you, Mr. Morrow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so this pricing is firm and fixed for two years, is that correct? Three years, sir. For three years? Yes, sir. So we have a one-year option, right? No, there's no options with this. M Mr. Chair, if I'm... I'm it, it says Mr. option Mullis. in here. Oh, I'm sorry. If I'm, uh, it's not a firm price now. No. Uh, it's based on an index, and, and the index is NYMEX. Yes. What's fixed is the premium or the spread we pay over the index. The spread. That's fixed. Okay. Not the price of natural gas is what it is. Okay. So it's so it's so uh, the index. This is index against NYMEX. NYMEX. Okay. Yes. So this is index. Okay. All right. So there's some um, variable exposure to the operation budget. Is that correct? Uh, the, that well, is correct. This is the, for the procurement of physical commodity. This. So we do have a financial project product that I had and for it, about half it, of that. Yeah, is, so this, the whole portfolio in our fields are hedged about 30%. Is uh, that correct? Natural gas is up to 50% now. We were able to layer another hedge earlier this month, so it's up to 50% now. Well done, Raj. Well done. Uh, <laughs> your music to my ears. You know, if we can get to 70, I'll be really, really happy. So, uh, so 50% is hedge, and what, what's, what, what would it be by the hedge at? Uh, it's at, uh, the first hedge was at $6.32 per decatherm, mm -hmm. and the second hedge was $5.42 per decatherm. $5.42? Correct. That, yeah. uh, that was earlier this month. That's why we, we did that. Well done. So, um, so we have 50% of our portfolio hedge to a weighted average. Uh, the second hedge, I guess, would be about 20%. That's correct. Okay, so we have 50% of our portfolio on natural gas hedged, and we will we can do the math. You can share that with us, right? Uh, the math on uh, the, uh, the, uh, the combined hedge rate. It's, it's roughly about six dollars yes, per six, exactly, six dollars. Roughly, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, um, so that protects our budget. Hmm? That protects our fuel budget. Well done. Yeah, and so then we added. I'm hmm? sorry. I said then we added about 15% on top of that. For, to, to, for premium to make sure that we would have estimated enough so we would have to come back or w with the market, you know, being unstable. So, so there is a bump up of the spread by 15% next yes, year? Th okay. Through, yes. Okay. And what was the logic behind that? Uh, I think Mr. Morrow can explain the logic behind that, but I can tell you what the budget is. The budget is at $6.60 per decatherm. So the hedges we have placed are well below the budget, so I'm reasonably for, for, confident for, 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 we'll protect the budget for 23. For 23, but 24 yeah. we have 24 we haven't done the budget yet, and uh, we'll uh, definitely yeah. have discussions with the operations group it, when we arrive at a the number then. And, and we would have the opportunity to buy some more hedges going in between. Certainly. Yes. Okay, good. To get to the, about 75, 80 percent. So help me understand the spread of okay. the, um, and the 15 percent premium on the spread next year? Well, the logic is behind, like I say, we, we, since we are hedging the fuel, nobody knows what fuel really is going to be, you know, a year from now or two years from now. Um, and you see, saw what happened with diesel and gasoline, how it basically doubled in a year, and it has not come back down to where we think it's really going to be. So we put that, the logic in there for, to make sure that if the price does go higher again, then we're covered. For us to budget. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll have a conversation offline. Okay. That. Okay, let's have a conversation offline about that. Um, thank you very much. Any other questions? Please vote. And that motion carries. Mr. Morrow will remain for agenda item number six, resolution authorizing the award of a contract for the procurement of vehicle towing services, IFB, B50087. Uh, thank you. Uh, next slide, please. This uh, is for vehicle towing for the entire fleet. It covers all 539 of our transit buses, uh, 450 of our non revenue vehicles, and our four streetcars. Um, included in this is a flat rate towing uh, for each vehicle weight rating. Uh, we, everything from a standard sedan all the way up to um, our articulated buses. Also included in this is accident recovery. Um, so if we do have an accident or incident or spill on the roadway, the vendor is responsible for cleaning that up. That protects us from anybody 
just coming up and saying, okay, we're gonna clean this up for you and then bill you. We've had that in the past, so this protects us from that. Next slide, please. If you remember several months back when I asked for an extension to the previous contract or our current contract, I said, we're gonna, well, I want an extension for opportunity to get better. This, we're gonna uh, separate this into zones. And previously, we've always had just one uh, towing vendor, and that has been a challenge, and sometimes with the response times. So we separated this into three zones for Fulton County, City of Atlanta, DeKalb, and Clayton County to get more participation you know, from vendors. Next slide, please. We received bids from uh, Gibbs Towing, which is a minority small business. They're going to be awarded zone number one. S&W, who was a previous contractor, they're going to be awarded zone number two and three. We're doing this because Gibbs Towing is headquartered in the city of Atlanta. S&W Towing, they have headquarters in Tucker and also have a, a service center on Moreland Avenue. So the response time for Clayton County and DeKalb County should be uh, very quick. This is for a total of $1,987,045 uh, for a contract of five years. Next slide, please. So the Office of Bus Maintenance respectfully requests authorization to enter into a resolution contract with Gibbs Towing and s and Towing for a total of $1,987,245. And Chairman Worthy, and I'll turn it back to you for consideration. Thank you, Mr. Morrow. Can I get a motion and second of agenda item number six, please? It is duly moved and seconded. Uh, are there any questions from members of the committee? Mr. Friars. Yeah, I had a question. Um, so this is, this touring service is for unlimited touring service regardless of how many incidents we have? Yes, sir. Is that right? Okay, all right. And uh, you mentioned the cleanup efforts that are done by this particular agency. Have we always had that in, in play that, that the touring company did the cleanup services? We did not, no, we, ha we have not always had it in play. Right. And what happened is we had an incident where a bus, you know, had an accident and then, then spilled some diesel fuel. And some environmental place, they came and they cleaned it up for us. We didn't call them. They heard about the incident. They showed up. Then they billed us $12,000. And I thought that price was way too much. So we looked at how can we get away from that to make sure that we're not getting um, just anybody showing up and cleaning up spills because they want to. Mm -hmm. So that's why we put the accident recovery inside of this. And we budgeted $50,000 a year for the cleanup. Hopefully we won't spend that much, but it's there in case we need it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions from members? If not, please vote. The resolution passes. Thank you, Mr. Morrow. Thank you. We'll direct your attention to agenda item number seven, a resolution to revise the customer code of conduct and subsequent changes to suspensions for any violations and we'll turn it over to Chief Carrier. Good morning. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Worthy, uh, Mr. Sharith, uh, Mr. Wright, uh, members of the Ops and Safety Committee meeting and other board members. I'm uh, Scott Crayer, Chief of Police and Emergency Management. And today I'm coming to uh, request a resolution to revise um, some points in our customer code of conduct and our right of respect program. Next slide, please. So a little history, uh, back in 2013, uh, the MARTA board passed uh, the original code of conduct and the right of respect program. Uh, two times in 2016, uh, we went back and revised this uh, program. Uh, the first revision, we increased the appeal process to 30 days and we created a hearing officer, which is an attorney, and we created fines instead of just jail time or suspension days. A second change in 2016 created uh, the actual suspension citations for non-jailable offenses. And then uh, currently right now in 2022, uh, I'm coming to you to request a uh, creation of a repeat offender charge and also increase suspension days for certain offenses. Next slide, please. So after careful consideration with the MARTA legal team, uh, we came up with these definitions uh, because of some of these challenges. Uh, many offenders are receiving multiple suspensions for a variety of violations, but continue to ride our system. MPD sees a small group of offenders that continue to violate the customer code of conduct with more than five active suspensions at one time. 
Arrests are made for criminal trespass after violating suspensions, but as we've seen the last couple of years, uh, our local courts are releasing these offenders without bond, uh, so we see them back on the system very quickly. So after com uh, conversing with the legal department, uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, we're creating a repeat offender violation, and that reads as following. A person who receives three citations, which are not appealed, or if appealed, a final determination of guilt has been made within a 90-day period, shall receive a 365-day suspension from MARTA. A person who receives four citations, which are not appealed, or if appealed, a final determination of guilt has been made within a 90-day period, shall be permanently banned from the system. And we also looked at some of the violations we have currently on, on the, uh, in the Code of Conduct uh, that had very small suspension days on them. And uh, working with Mr. Greenwood on people first, meaning we want to protect our, uh, not only our ridership, but our employees. We also uh, have had conversations with the ATU about further protecting our, our operators. So if you go to the next slide, <clears throat> These violations uh, were like 30 to 60 day violations, and we felt like they were important enough to be 365 day suspensions. And those are as follows. Indecent exposure, stealing or willfully damaging martyr property, assault or threat of assault, hindering or disturbing the operation, operator or passengers of a bus or rail car, fighting, harassing or threatening martyr passengers or employees, this includes following or stalking, and then entering the operator's cab or driver's seat. I would like to note that MARTA is leading the nation in this program. Uh, APTA has recently uh, started a committee, which MARTA will be leading uh, to address ride of respect programs throughout the country. Uh, we are one of the few transit agencies that have this program, so I feel like we're a leader in this, and, and we're going to continue to help APTA as they work through that for other, other uh, transit agencies. So with that, I'll turn it back over to uh, Chairman Worthy for any questions or comments. I will entertain a motion on agenda item number eight. It is moved and it is duly moved and seconded. Uh, I see some questions. We'll start with Chair Scott. Yes. Good morning in full support of the resolution, but I have a question. How do you identify, how does the driver specifically know the repeat offenders? Now, the, the operator might not, uh, but the police department keeps track of those. So when we suspend you from the system, you're put, your name and information is put in the PCC, the uh, Police Communication Center. And so when our officers, more, more than likely our officers are gonna identify these people first. And when we see them on the system, we'll be able to run them through PCC to make sure to confirm that they have those active suspensions, and then we can take the appropriate action. So if a person has been suspended from ridership for 365 days, mm -hmm. and they actually enter a bus, how the driver won't know that they've been suspended, is that correct? More than likely not, uh, unless they just personally know the individual. Um, but our operators are, are uh, great at calling in uh, when they have a disruption on the bus and we immediately respond to the bus and that's when we'll find out if they have the suspension or not. Uh, what this does too is it, it really um, puts them back in the criminal court. So if they're violating a suspension, uh, we can make the physical arrest for criminal trespass. So they basically would have to fin again or something to, to bring attention to the fact that they were what the, what the repeat offender uh, is, it really focuses around our known repeat offenders that we see every day violating the customer code of conduct, which really disrupts uh, our ridership's, um, you know, ability to have a safe and secure environment to ride in. Um, so that's really what the repeat offender uh, ordinance or, or, or section is, is targeting. And those individuals are well known uh, by our officers and a lot of our riders know it. I know some of the individuals that use our CNSA app uh, know the same individuals each day. Thank you. Um, Chief, 
criminal law is not my area of practice, so um, I, I know nothing, but um, I, I'm concerned about, uh, you know, the, the quick release without bond for, to, for some of these people that uh, are indeed truly dangerous to our passengers and to our employees. Is there such thing in the official code of Georgia as aggravated um, criminal trespass, or is it so it's just? There is not, uh, unfortunately. Um, but normally, uh, the, the, the criminal uh, trespass charge is in addition to something else they've done. Uh, very rarely do we just simply have that one charge. Uh, but as you know, with COVID, uh, beginning in March Courts of 2020, right. All the courts shut down. Uh, the jails would only accept felony cases. So I think we're going to start to see that turn now. Uh, we'll be able to see uh, more jail time. And we're really working closely with our uh, magistrate judges and our municipal court judges to make sure that uh, they take this serious. So, so usually a, a charge under this code of conduct would likely be criminal trespass plus a assault or battery. More than likely, it's tied to another offense. Um, whether it be a felony or Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mullis. Uh, good morning. Thank you for working on this. Uh, civility is the only way we're going to have good experience for all of our customers, and I'm supportive of this also. I wanted to ask you about the four citations within 90 day period and that they would be permanently banned. Um, it's been my experience that most people who are on the trains and behaving badly have some type of mental illness mm -hmm. or they have some sort of substance abuse. Absolutely. And, and that's why they re repeat. And um, some folks get treatment, some folks resist treatment. Um, my only concern is, is that if they show some treatment and they get on to medication to improve their behavior, um, are they still permanently banned? Is there a way for them to show they have an so, appeal process? Yeah. Uh, with no, our, well, not an appeal process, mm -hmm. but just they have to sh get treatment and they have to do some self-care mm -hmm. where they can manage their behavior in a better way. Is there any way for them in the future to get back on the system if they get treatment? I currently don't have a, a, an opportunity for that. We do work closely with the city courts. Uh, they do have a substance abuse court uh, specifically and mental health uh, court for that for that purpose. Um, but I'll be honest with you, what we, what we see every day on the system, we see the, the same individuals. Uh, either they're refusing treatment or they're not getting it. And to be honest with you, the only place that we can take an individual that doesn't have criminal charges is Grady Hospital. And Grady will medicate for 24 hours to 48 hours and put them back out on the street. So we see the, re the revolving door of the mental health issue that needs to be addressed uh, by local and state governments. Uh, if I could, Mr. Chairman, I would just urge that I, it has to be done. I appreciate it needs to be done. But in the future, so if we could find if, if someone got some help and um, that we figure out how we can not permanently ban them if they have proof of help and they maintain that treatment. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mullis. Any other questions? Mr. Durrett? Uh, Scott, are yes. you familiar, you, I assume, are familiar with the Repeat Offender Commission and the Repeat Offender Tracking Unit? Is, I am. Are you plugged into that at all? We are. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, Chief uh, Shearbaum and I uh, talk probably weekly, if not every other day, um, along with his team. So uh, we are, are, are intertwined with that. Our CIU detectives are constantly uh, discussing cases uh, repeat offender cases with uh, whatever zone uh, or whatever precinct those uh, those cases come out of. Okay, thank you. I've, I've been part of that, and I haven't I haven't thought to bring up Marta's participation, and I haven't heard it uh, being brought up. So it's more of a working relationship than it is at sitting at a, a meeting. Right. Um, but uh, D. A. Willis is, is is doing a fantastic job. Of yeah. That. Thank you. Any other questions for the chief? If not, I'll call the question. So please vote. Hmm. 
that resolution passes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, agenda item number eight is a briefing for Wayside Cable Thermal Events. Mr. Matthew. All right. Good morning, Chairman Worthy, um, Mr. Srinath, Mr. Wright, and members of the Operations and Safety Committee. My name is Adi Matthew. I'm the Director of Maintenance of Way. I want to thank you for this opportunity to brief the committee on MARTA's efforts to mitigate potential thermal events due to wayside cable failures. At the end of this presentation, I hope to inform you about the wayside cable thermal events and what the Office of Maintenance of Way is currently doing to mitigate them and ensure that the safe and on-time travel of our patrons. Next slide, please. For this briefing, I'll give an overview on the wayside thermal event that impacted the underground 750 volt power distribution system and our efforts to mitigate any reoccurrence of this failure in the future. Next slide, please. On Thursday, January 6, during track inspections from Buckhead to Northland Drive, track walkers observed smoke emanating from a wayside electrical maintenance hole located at FR 611 plus 00 on the red line. Our Electrical Power and Equipment Department, or EPNE, Safety and the Fire Department were contacted and, uh, and arrived on scene to assess the situation. Upon arrival, minor smoke with excessive heat was found coming from the electrical maintenance hole. Power was de-energized and it was discovered that the source of the smoke and heat was failing traction power cables. Next slide, please. Upon further investigation, it was discovered that the root cause of the failure were splices in the cables, which had begun to degrade causing them to heat up and burn the cable insulation. For your information, a splice is a joining of two or more conductors together in a manner that results in a permanent electrical and mechanical bond. If you look at the picture on your screen, you see the cables and you see the red, the red portion of the cable, that is the splice. That's where those two cables are joined. And uh, it's the most common area for cable failures, of course, where we bond those cables. And once it fails, it heats up and it burns that insulation, causing that really thick black smoke you see on the top of the maintenance hole there. Cleveland Electric was contacted on an emergency basis and began work with EP&E to repair the damaged cables. Next slide, please. After repair of the damaged cables, EP&E immediately organized a committee consisting of electrical engineers, system engineering, safety, and civil engineering to develop a plan of inspecting each of the traction power manholes, maintenance holes, for any signs of damage or degradation to the cables. To date, EP&E has inspected over 100 electrical maintenance holes, representing approximately 45% of the entire system with only one electrical maintenance hole cable exhibiting signs of cable splice degradation thus far. This cable was discovered on the west line at our Mosley Park interlocking. The cable was de-energized and the splices were repaired, replaced without incident. As you can see here, this is a system map that we're using to, to track our manholes. Uh, we've completed the east-west line and next we'll be working on the north-south line. Next slide, please. EP&E is currently awaiting the de delivery of Envirocyte QuickView 360-degree man maintenance hole scanning pole camera system to expedite the inspection of the maintenance holes. This system will also give us a much more detailed view of the entire electrical maintenance hole and cable condition as, uh, as well as provide images which can be sent to our system engineers for further inspection if needed. This system will also allow us to develop a PM schedule to periodically inspect the electrical maintenance holes and prevent any reoccurrence of the cable failures. Next slide, please. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your time and turn it back to Chairman Worthy. Thank you, Mr. Matthew, um, for that briefing and for the good work. Um, something candidly uh, I wouldn't have thought of. And so I think it's really important that you brought that forward. Uh, any questions of Mr. Matthew? Oh, that's my light I'm seeing in the plexiglass. Okay. Um, no questions. Great job. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. I'll direct uh, committee members to the FY22 May performance indicators, which are in your packet. Uh, that's an informational only uh, item. And with no further business to come before the Operations and Safety Committee, we stand adjourned.
everyone has been signed in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, first item on the agenda is approval of the June 30th, 2022 Business Management Committee meeting uh, for today. Um, can I get a motion to approve? I won for you. Uh, I am signed in now. All right. Okay, so we've had a motion to approve the, uh, the meeting minutes for June 30th. Okay, can I get a motion? It's been seconded. All right, all those in favor? Can we vote? All right, the, the minutes have been approved. Thank you. The first item on the agenda is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract for procurement of target attack protection and email fraud defense software uh, invitation for bid. This is IFB B50142. Dean Wallace, AGM Information uh, Security, CISO. You have the floor. Good morning, Chairman Frierson, Mr. Durrett. Mr. Srinath, members of the Business Management Committee, may I direct you to its agenda item number two. And we're before you today to request your recommendation to the Board of Directors to approve the resolution authorizing the award of a contract for the procurement of target attack protection email fraud defense software. That's at IFB B50142. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so I'm not going to read through this, uh, but MAR has been using a product called Proofpoint, that's a target attack protection software for about four years. The contract ended. We're looking to get into a new contract with them. To call them a spam filter is a disservice to what they do. They block uh, zero-day threats. They block ransomware attacks. They block all that stuff that comes through email. And being that over 90% of the cyber attacks start with email, it's a really important product for our defense at MARTA. Um, we released a solicitation for a four-year contract. With a, it's a one-year contract with three, three one-year options to procure the software. Uh, the DBO, DBE goal is zero percent because there's no certified DBE resellers for email fraud defense software. They sell this product through resellers. We issued the IFB on April 18, 2022. Number of firms receiving the online solicitation or the purchase of a CD was 20. The date the bid closed was May 18, 2022 at 2 p.m. We received, received zero bids. Next slide, please. So five of those were clearing houses or planning rooms. Two were unable to perform the work. Uh, too busy to complete the IFB with six of those, and seven didn't respond to the survey. So under the MARTA Act, when there are no responses, CPM can negotiate with the current supplier. A price quote was requested from the current supplier, Presidio, um, and MARTA's internal audit, uh, they actually conducted, they finished their um, assessment and it's fair and reasonable. The cost of this procurement is based on the current supplier's quote. Total is $857,039.76 for four years. That's if all the options were exercised. The cost per year is $214,259.94. It'll be funded through 100% of the capital project. Um, Budget. So at this time, I respectfully request that the BMC committee recommend to the full board the approval of the resolution authorizing the award of the contract for the procurement of target attack protection and email fraud defense software IFB B50142. Next slide. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Can I have a motion? And second. Okay. It's been it's been moved and second. All right, discussion by the board members. Frida? Uh, Dean, this is just going to be a part of the plan that I think you presented at audit committee, if I'm not mistaken, the last time or time before last when you were looking at, you know, just trying to keep up with cybersecurity. And I know that's an ongoing issue, but this is just a part of that whole. It's part of the layer. So we've, we've used it for okay. four years, and it's just one of those layers of security that we put in. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions from the board members? 
Yeah, I know that I remember us having this discussion even last year concerning uh, the importance of having this type of uh, barrier in, in our email, email space uh, is critical. Absolutely. So uh, I'm in favor of that. Any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, may I have a call to vote? Has everyone voted? Okay. All right. Uh, the resolution has passed. Thank you. Have Thank a good you. Day. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is number three, and that is an, a resolution authorizing a modification for contractual authorization for procurement of CCTV and enterprise network switches of contract number IFB B48023. Mr. Kirk Talbert, AGM Technology, CIO, you have the floor. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Farson, Mr. Durrett, Mr. Srinath, and members of the Business Management Committee. This morning, I would like to respectfully request approval to amend the aforementioned contract. It was a five-year contract to provide maintenance and support on the switches that support our CCTV network. What we're asking for this morning is the authorization to expand that contract by $107,746.26, which will allow us to support an additional 49 switches that have recently uh, been added to the network and need to have support. This will not extend the term of the contract. It was a competitive five-year contract. It's simply adding additional switches to this contract for the additional amount, which will be coming out of our <clears throat> approved operational budget. If you can go to the next slide, please. Here we see the breakdown of the original contract value and the modified amount. Thank you. Okay, may I have a motion? Um, and may I get a second? Okay, it's been moved and second. Uh, discussion by the board members? Okay. Any questions for Mr. Mr. Talbert? Okay, hearing none, I call the question. All right, the resolution has passed. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Cal, Mr. Talbert. All right, the next item on, I, on the agenda is the uh, resolution authorizing modification in a contractual authorization for scrap metal recycling and removal services, uh, RFQ Q39887. Michelle Malone Thompson, Director of Revenue Operations, you have the floor. Good morning, Mr. Frierson, Mr. Durrett, Mr. Srinath, and committee members. Today, I will be presenting the resolution for approval to modify an existing contract, RFQ Q39887, for scrap metal recycling and removal services. Next slide, please. The purpose is to gain approval of the Marta Board of Directors for interim GM, CEO, or his delegate to amend current contract, RFQ Q39887, for scrap metal and recycling services with eminent waste Services Inc. to support scrapping of obsolete token fair media. Next slide, please. In 2006, MARTA implemented AFC automatic fair collection system and transitioned from tokens to contactless smart cards and limited use tickets. Since then, the authority has accumulated approximately 2.8 million old Fairgate tokens, which predominantly contain copper. The contractor will remove and destroy. 47,000 pounds of tokens and pay MARTA $110,000 in scrap value for the copper. Board approval is necessary due to the value of the contract increasing above $2,000, $200,000, sorry. Next slide, please. I respectfully request your approval of the resolution to modify contract RFQ Q39887. Thank you for your time and your consideration. Uh, thank you. Can I get um, a motion and second? Okay, it's been moved in second. Question from the board members? Mr. Durrett. Did you bring my token? I'm going to defer to Mr. Srinath. Noted, Mr. While there's a lot of tokens to accumulate over the years, and uh, I'm sure you know, I wouldn't be surprised as they still appear. Well, we actually do have some. You do? Mm -hmm. We approximately collect one or two 
per month collectively from all the buses on average. Okay. All right. Any other, any other questions? Any other comments? Okay. I call the question. All right. The resolution has passed. Thank you very much for that information. Uh, and uh, somebody's going to get a lot of tokens, huh? Duh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you. The other items that uh, other matters that are on the agenda uh, is a letter of intent from a resolution authorizing the award of a contract for uh, Arista switches and maintenance. That's for information only. That's on the agenda. And also other matters concerning FY 2022 May financial highlights and financial performance indicators. That's for information. Unless the board has any questions concerning those, those other matters. Mr. Mullis. I'm okay. going to always talk about the financial performance and I just want to give the Martyr team congratulations for having us a hundred and sixty nine million dollars at the end of May uh, surplus um, that's an outstanding surplus and I'm hoping that we make it past 175 by the end of June the 30th Thank you. Appreciate that. Yes, Mart is uh, moving forward. And the first time in its history, we are, uh, have the resources to, uh, to expand this enterprise and do some other things. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. Do we have any other uh, comments concerning other matters? We're hearing none. I'd like to uh, call this meeting to adjourn. Thank you very much.